Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amiri. In this video, we are going to talk about string variable type in Azure Data Factory. And uh, then we are going to perform a demo in which uh, we will uh, read some data from some activity and uh, try to save in the string type of variable. So a couple of scenarios I will explain where you can use them. Now let's go to the Azure Data Factory and here uh, we have uh, a different type of variable variables available and one of uh, is going to be string. So create a new pipeline. Here we are in the main pipeline canvas and uh, you can see the variables. Once you click on the variables, uh, it's uh, going to be given you option. You want to create a new one? Yes, I would like to. And I'm going to call this one vstring. And uh, you have uh, the type right there. It's called the string. Now you have boolean and array. I have a, a video on these two as well. So you watch that. Go ahead and click on string and now you can save any value such as string one, two, three, whatever. So all those uh, values can be saved here. Now, I was doing some research and uh, trying to find out if there is any limit on this uh, uh, total value of uh, that you can save in the string type variable. So I couldn't really uh, find a document uh, from Microsoft and uh, I did some testing and I was able to, you know, save tons of data in this one. So I will uh, show you uh, how I did that as well. So once uh, we will uh, go to the demo. So string type, uh, that's going to be able to save your string type of data in the variable. Now, think about that uh, if uh, there are, there could be tons of scenario where you will be using it, you know. Uh, maybe you will be extracting your date time and saving it and concatenating to another file name and all those kind of things. Okay, so another scenario could be like, let's say you are reading the data from uh, your um, SQL and then would like to save in the variable and then further use in some condition, if condition switch and all those kind of uh, transform activities that uh, you can use that. Uh, so in our case, uh, let's go to the lookup here and uh, we are creating our data set. Uh, uh, I already have uh, Azure, blah, sorry, SQL and uh, right there. So then we create a linked service, uh, click new and uh, select your subscription, select your SQL server, database name and provide the username and authentication. TB user and the password is going to be my password. We created this link service. I'm going to call this one LNK TB. Okay, and uh, hit create. Now, uh, what we can do, we can get the data from uh, our uh, SQL and uh, save to the variable. That's what we are going to do here. Now, we go to this query here. And uh, before we do that, uh, I have, uh, let's say, this uh, data I would like to save into the uh, variable. So think about that. Uh, um, let's say if I will just... Uh, I don't want to be in a repli this is going to be replicated only one time. And uh, this is one of the tests I was doing it like I was replicating like many times and trying to save it and trying to find the max limit of it on some uh, documents, uh, not the documents on the on the some uh, blog post. I read that it is 16 MB total that you can save into the string. So that's a huge uh, data set. You are, I don't know if you want to even do that. But anyways, uh, here what we did, uh, we are going to save that uh, and uh, take this value and save it right there. So that's our query for our lookup. And the, the column is, that's the column name. And we are only selecting the first row here. Now, if I go to the set variable and I can set the value of lookup to the variable we have created. So right there. And here I'm gonna go to the variables and select the variable string. And then I'm gonna provide the value. So the value is coming from our lookup. Click right there, look up that first row, and then we will say column. So that's the value right there. So you see right there, that's the part we added. In the first row, find this uh, column value right there, okay? So we have that, and now we are all good, and hit OK, and uh, we should be able to execute. So it's going to create read that uh, uh, value from the SQL uh, query, and then save to the variable. So pretty straightforward. You can see right there, lookup is uh, running this query, and uh, then it is uh, going to return uh, the output. Uh, and you can see right there, uh, Amir Shahzad is ADF engineer. Even I'm not really a truly engineer as of now, but uh, is uh, that's the value, and then it is set to the value right there. So now what we are going to do, we are going to replicate uh, more times. Uh, so let me go to the lookup here and uh, say instead of replicating one time, I'm going to go. Um, 10,000, um, yeah, 10,000 times, right? 
So let's execute that one and uh, see if this value will be saved. So you can see that it's, uh, uh, it's not that small value because uh, we are returning a tons of data here. So the, if you see the total characters here, that's uh, almost one line and I'm repeating that uh, 10,000 times, right? So that's what I'm doing there. So that got it pretty. Uh, let me see if I can run, if I will paste in some uh, um, right there. So control, control V. Yeah, so if we save, this is uh, almost uh, seven KB data, but uh, you can see right there. Anyways, let's go back here and see it just saved it, it no problem at all. So we can take a look uh, on the output. You see right there, that's our output looks like. And if we go to set variable, sorry, click right there in the white canvas and go to the output right there. So you can see the values set to all these values right there. Okay, so it can save all tons of data just to let you know, no, nothing to worry about that. Okay, this is one of the scenario where we save the data from the lookup to the this variable. Now what we are gonna do, we are gonna go ahead and create another scenario in which uh, let's say we are reading the data from some web activity and uh, then uh, that data we would like to save in the variable. So this, see right there, this is a, uh, this, this look, looks like uh, too many activities. So. So see, uh, sorry, Th this is the data coming from the this uh, REST API and uh, I would like to save into variable. So that I can do that as well. So I'm gonna copy this link uh, and uh, you can go ahead and uh, in the same pipeline, we can go to the same pipeline or create a new pipeline or let's create a new pipeline here and uh, we are gonna call this one web. Okay, leave the name actually, just don't worry about that. So I'm going to uh, do web activity right there. So in the web activity, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to settings and I'm going to provide the URL and it's going to get method, okay? So it got the values, the rest of that you can just leave as it is. And what we would like to do, we would like to save the values to the variable. So I'm gonna create our variable and it's going to be our, let's say I will call it the V JSON employees, okay? So we have that is going to be string type, but now next uh, what's gonna happen, uh, if I will go ahead, let me run this uh, as it is. So nothing to worry, we are gonna take a look at what it's gonna return uh, and then we can save it. Uh, so we executed the web activity and it uh, got this data for us, uh, see right there. So it got everything like data. It has status success, data is equal to this uh, employee one, two, three, four, five, six and all that. So let's say if I would like to save this data into the variable, how I can do that, I'm gonna get the set variable and now I actually can do multiple things here. So if I go right there and I'm gonna go to variables here and then uh, I will say V, JSON type employees, whatever. And then uh, here, now I'm gonna add dynamic contents. So, so web dot output, that's what I would like to save. So see right there and I can debug again. Now the values will be saved to my variable. And then maybe I would like to write to a file or maybe I would like to write to a table or maybe I would like to use this variable as a parameter um, input uh, to some Azure function. So it depends, uh, there are tons of scenario, then I can use this variable. Uh, okay, so let's see what error we have. It says uh, that, uh, okay. See this, uh, um, what's happening here, this uh, web activity is returning us a JSON data. So that's object type data and uh, now, What's happening, uh, we are trying to save that data into the string type and that's what we are getting error. Now what we will do in this case, uh, we'll go back here and I will uh, convert this data to the string. So I put the uh, curly parenthesis around this uh, variable, sorry, activity right there. So you see this uh, curly parenthesis, I added it. So it means that whatever you are returning me, add, uh, convert to the string, that's what it means. So let's go back here, hit okay. And now if I debug now, it should be just fine. Okay, it's, it got completed successfully. So it got these all values and then uh, what happened? Uh, it is uh, uh, It has saved into the variable. So you see right there, it saved all that. If you also notice that uh, if I'm converting the JSON to the string, uh, it also add these uh, escape characters to it. Uh, and I have another video in which uh, actually I wanted to take the value of a variable and save to the um, a file and uh, I showed that how to remove these uh, backslashes from there so you can take a look at there as well. Now if you see right there, there are a lot of uh, things you can do. So in case you don't wanna be like a, a status, you don't want this message anymore, you don't wanna be like this, all the 
uh, stuff for that uh, Azure Data Factory is adding to it uh, and message and everything and you are interested only to get uh, the data part of it. So you can always go to variable again and inside that you can filter like output dot data, right? So uh, we will be just uh, getting the data instead of getting the entire uh, um, uh, JSON with the other information that uh, Azure Data Factory adds to it. So we will be, this, uh, this is the, the request we made to the REST API and uh, that value. Okay, let's see if it got completed successfully. Now you see that it is, has this uh, all information, but uh, at the end uh, when we will uh, set variable, we just check that uh, and only got that. So we are getting only the values starting from the data now. It's not getting all the garbage. Uh, uh, what we had like success uh, and uh, all those kind of things. This is not there anymore. It's just starting from here anymore because we are selecting uh, output dot data here. So this is how you will save uh, tons of information in your uh, uh, string type variables. You will use them. Uh, you can, uh, you know, further, uh, if you want to reset this value, let's say if I would like to reset value to another value after that, I can do that as well. So if I will do set uh, variable, I can, uh, once I used it, if I want to set this value to another, just maybe, uh, I will say this, let me call this a preset to, let me do this right there, add the dynamic contents, and I'm going to say I am setting to new string. Okay, so you can uh, set to new string, you can uh, use uh, reuse this variables and all that. So if I debug it, so first uh, what happened, uh, it uh, got the values from the web, it saved to the variable, and uh, then maybe you have used some other activities here, and then you need to use this variable again in some other uh, processes. So what you will do, or activities, uh, then you will uh, be able to reuse it, and next value will be set, whatever you will set. So if I'll go here and uh, this is happening probably too many activities I'm running on this one. This is a free web REST UI API, and that's where the problem is. So one sometimes it failed with saying too many requests. So, okay, so this got completed. See, right there, web got us all this data that was saved to the variable, okay, this. Now, once I will reset again, now it is the new values, this one. So what I'm trying to tell you here, you can uh, reuse this variable after using one time and go to next activities and reuse it and all that because you don't have to create a tons of uh, variables, uh, you know, if you just want to, uh, you know, change the value in the middle of execution and reuse them. So you can use by set variables uh, activity. So thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next video.